Good afternoon, everybody. I'm in the van. It's, um, gosh, I don't know what day it is. Wednesday? Gee whiz, I'm losing track of time. Anyway, <clears throat> it's raining like crazy outside. Um, so the center's open, and so most everybody's in there. But, uh, <clears throat> the thing about being in the center, yes, it's warm, and yes, you can get coffee and hot water and microwave, yada, yada. But everyone's sick. <laughs> Last night, there was a lady, I swear to God, she was trying to hack up a, a lung, and she does it every night. So finally, last night, people were cranky enough and told her to go get help from the nurse or something because she was keeping everybody up. It's so funny. This place is like one flew over the cuckoo's nest. I am not kidding you. Um, it's It's becoming a lot of fun to just sit and... Like I do my my writings, I'll sit and wait a little while. Of course, always wearing a mask. But the thing is about um, in the bunkhouse, they don't have to wear a mask. And that's where all the ladies are coughing and hacking and sneezing. And <sighs> I um, cover up my bunk with um, um, blankets. Plus they have two full-time huge air quality filter things going and one's right next to my bed so um i have that going for me um wow <laughs> that's all i know to say these people are cranky <laughs> i don't know maybe it's the dreary dreariness of everything but I can get away and sit in my vehicle and there's a lot of people that do there are other people that have vans and they have cars and they sit in them um, they allow us to have like internet for I think five five or six o'clock at night until nine at night I think or yeah I think that's when they turn off the lights I'm not sure exactly because by then I'm kind of zoned out anyway so um and they have the runway lights right by my bed. So, I, like I said, I have blankets around to make it dark where I'm at, my specific bunk. And I have a, a lower bunk, which is really kind of nice. But this is really an experience. It's a damn good thing I went to Job Corps um, when I was 19 years old because it's so much like it. I, I just can't believe it. The rules are like that. They have... We used to have what we called RAs, <laughs> residential advisors, and they were the ones that watched over us and everything. And these ladies are, it's just like we're older and that's all. Um, and there's a lot more people in the bunkhouse. There's about 45 in the room I'm in. I'm not positive. So you can imagine that's 45 people, half of which are sick, coughing and sneezing, as I said, and everything. And cranky a uh, few of them are on walkers most of them are older um but there are some young ladies there are people there that live there they just totally live there they get their mail there they everything and i'm really glad they've got a place to be all you have to do is show up and tell them you're going to be the next day and you'll have your bunk um but you have to come consistently you can't just not come <laughs> and expect your bed to be there someone will take it so anyway, it's, like I said, it's been a really interesting um, run of, of, I'm meeting all kinds of interesting people. I keep mostly to myself because, like I said, people are sick. And then there are a lot of mental ill issues. Uh, the lady in the bunk across from me, if she tells me one more time that she's a bounty hunter, I don't know, you know. She has all these conspiracy theories. And we're losing people, and oh my. And they had to tell her to shut up, and I think they kicked her out for two days. <laughs> Golly. Ah. I could write a whole book just on this, just on this little chapter going on right now. But it won't be long, and I will be getting an advocate, and I might just go ahead and stay in there. Because I take my Jackery in every day and uh, and uh, plug it in every night. And then 
it's got two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's got uh, seven places where I can plug in the ladies' phones. So I've already told them, you know, if you want, <laughs> here it is. Here, I'll show you. Okay. So that's kind of what they, they can uh, put their phones up on the air conditioning or on the air filter and let them um, charge all night on the Jackery. They won't let me put a strip in there. They have rules. They have a lot of rules. You got to go in at a certain time, come out at a certain time. They kick you out usually during the day. But because it's raining, they got the warming dorm open. And like I said, people are kind of cranky right now. Even the men. I, I can't even imagine being in the, men, the men's dorm. <laughs> I've already heard about it. It's pretty rough. They've kicked out quite a few people since I've been here. You know. Got to keep them rules. Uh, but I just sit outside from early morning. I get my coffee. I They have toasters, microwave, hot coffee, hot water. Um, I think that's it. And, uh, you know, that's before breakfast. I don't even stay for breakfast. There's just too many germs, too much, too much. So I go get my coffee, do all that. Then I go out in the van and I have a... Um, uh, Mr. Buddy, because it's cold. Um, it's wet and dreary and cold. I don't have Mr. Buddy going on right now because I need to go get another tank, propane tank, and money's tight right now, and there we go. Whereas, I can plug in my electric blanket to the Jackery. It doesn't cost me anything. So, that works. Oops. So, anyway, that's an update on the, the silliness going on over here. Ha! <laughs> My new phone's okay. Um, I miss my old phone, but I... There you go. <laughs> I try every time to upgrade, and so I upgraded, and oh, poo. I should have got um, the warranty, but I couldn't afford that. I mean, I think they wanted $50 extra, and that was a little tough for me to come up with besides the how much the phone was on top of that. I mean, my old that was my old phone. My new phone, I have no warranty on it either. And it cost half as much as my other phone because I didn't really have enough to really even buy a phone, but you cannot navigate your life without it, I have found out. Oh my gosh, technology has taken over. It has changed us as a society. And there's nothing we can do about it. You can buck it all you want, but you know what society keeps going forward and if you don't keep up too bad so sad i found that out bucking it isn't working for me <laughs> so now i gotta catch up so i'm doing the best i can y'all anyway today's a much better day even though it's raining i like rain i i'm in my own little cozy place i just had tomato soup um, or tomato bisque with basil, organic. And, uh, oh, another thing about this place, mm, bad, is they sometimes give you um, expired food and rotten fruit and different things. And um, it's announced real quickly in the dining room, don't eat the apples, they're bad, and, you know, or whatever it is. And then, then you see everybody get up and throw it all in the trash. <laughs> I had to throw away a couple of eggs. Um, they gave a, a hard-boiled eggs because when I, when I peeled them, they were brown inside or black, par partial black. Anyhow. That made me decide that I was going to go ahead and eat my own food in my own van. So that's what I've been doing. I thought I was going to save money on food, but I've decided that isn't such a good idea after all. So anyway, um, there's good and the bad to everything. Uh, so far, this is a, a super experience. It's humbling. It, it, it lets you know how other people are doing. And um, some are here for no reason of their own I mean nothing that they did wrong uh, they lost a job you name it I mean health mostly health reasons I mean our country is just really lacking in help, helping people with their health and I'm so blessed I mean they want to help me too much see when they do get a hold of somebody like me I'm called the golden girl 
I even heard him call me that because I'm the one that has all the insurance that'll pay for everything. Mm -hmm. So don't you know they want to stick it to me and put me on this and that and everything. I really have to monitor them and monitor my own health, as we should all do. Uh, just don't take the doctor's, uh, uh, you know, get a second opinion, um, look it up. I mean, we got the internet now, man. It's easy. Just just go and, and look it up and educate yourself and don't just, okay, I'll take that medicine or okay. I'll... I decided against Remicade and then I started talking to a lot of people that were on it and it changed my opinion and I'm part of a, a few groups with Crohn's disease and everything. So you really have to educate yourself about what you're doing, what you're doing with your health. I mean, everything. It isn't, it isn't our grandma's life anymore where um, the family doctor came out. I even had a doctor back when I was a little girl. I remember he used to come out to the house. I mean, he was the kind of a last of his breed, but he did. And he, you know, you had one doctor. You didn't have like 15 like you do now, for hell's sakes. So things are changing. You got to change with it. That's all there is to it. I'm going to be 66 next year. I can't even believe I've lived this long. But I can tell by looking in the mirror. <laughs> But you know what? Either either life can break you or wound you, or it can make you a winner. It, you know, you can you can take the lessons and go forward. And the things that you did wrong, you did wrong. Do you know it? Did you learn the lesson? Don't do it again. Okay, move on. And if your family members can't, that's all. I, I don't know what to tell you. Our tribes, usually our blood is harsher to to us than than uh, anybody. That's why we keep choosing other people and keep adding people to our tribes because our other tribe isn't being very nice. But you know what? I'm okay with that. I'm okay with where everything is right now with any, any and all of my family members. Of course, I'd love to see my grandchildren more. I'd like them to get to know me and, and to know me and not hear the rumors about me from my in-laws and... and you know, the things exes have said that are very cruel and mean. You know, I mean, okay. 30 years ago, I upset you. Get over it. <laughs> God. Anyway. Uh, people. They're just on my mind because there's so much mental health. But people need to, to work on themselves. I, I see it here every day. Man, I just can't believe it got to do better folks we've got to do better if we're gonna survive as a species and talking civil war and we're fighting everybody and families fighting families and i i'm guilty of some of that too i am and i'm trying to remedy it and change my attitude be more accepting and this has helped me a lot this is being here has really helped me because i'm i'm hearing other people's stories and they're just amazing and they inspire me. Some inspire me. Some scare me to death. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to let you go. I've rambled on enough. So that's the update of here at the Prada Center. I'm in bed 90. <laughs> Look me up. Bye. <laughs>